Good evening, Camby, and welcome to the Camby Urban Renewal Special Meeting of April 9th, 2014. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now a moment of silence for all of those that serve our country, both at home and abroad, but are in harm's way. Thank you. Please be seated. First on our agenda tonight, we have the consent agenda. Chairman, I uh, move to approve the consent agenda, which includes the approval of minutes of the March 5th, 2014 URA special meeting, uh, the minutes of the March 12th, 2014 URA special meeting, and the minutes of March 19th, 2014 URA special meeting. And do we have a second? I'll second. It's been moved by Vice Chair Hodson and seconded by Commissioner Rocha to approve the consent agenda, which is the approval of the minutes of March 5th, 12th, and 19th of 2014. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? And it carries 7-0. Next, we have citizen input. Do we have any citizens who would like to offer input tonight? This will be your first opportunity. All right, seeing none, we'll move on to community announcements. Sue. Uh, spring is here, and that means road construction is near. Work will begin April 14th on reconstruction of Northeast 5th Avenue from North Ivy and North Juniper to Northeast 9th, and also on Northeast 9th Avenue from North Ivy to North Knott Street. Uh, this work will include paving the road, curbs, and sidewalks. Due to construction, there will be intermittent road closures and detours. Uh, the construction timeline and maps of road closures are posted online at www.ci.canby.or.us. And then the Canby Library would like to remind uh, the community that they have a month of international story times during April. The schedule is available at the library, 292 North Holly Street, and will include Romanian, Russian, German, Spanish, French, Italian, and Vietnamese stories. On May 3rd, the library will mark the annual Children's Book Day celebration from 2 to 4 with special activities. All right. Thank you, Sue. Any other announcements? Anna from the board? Very good. Next, we will move to a public hearing for the supplemental budget for the 2013-2014 fiscal year. The matter presently before the hearing body requires a public hearing. All interested persons in attendance shall be heard on the matter. If you wish to testify on this matter, please fill out a yellow comment card and give it to the city recorder. At the appropriate time, please step forward to the microphone, state your name and interest in the matter. Those people that are interested in testifying as either proponents or opponents, please indicate your desire to speak by raising your hands at this time. All righty. For longer presentations, proponents and opponents may buy time from one another. In doing so, those either in favor or opposed may allocate their time to a spokesperson who will represent the entire group. All questions must be directed through the chair. All evidence to be considered must be submitted to the hearing body for public access. All written testimony received both for and against shall be summarized by staff and presented briefly to the hearing body during the staff report. The public hearing will be conducted as follows. The staff report followed by questions, if any, by the hearing body or staff. Then open public hearing for testimony with proponents first, not more than three minutes apiece, followed by opponents, not more than three minutes apiece, and then we'll close the public testimony. That'll be followed by a final opportunity for questions, if any, by the hearing body, and then discussion by the hearing body. A decision shall be made by the hearing body at the close of the hearing or the matter will be continued to a date certain in the future. This will be the only notice of that date that you will receive. Does anyone have any questions about the procedure of the hearing? Any here? Any here? Are we good? All right. So we'll start with the staff report with Haley Fish, our finance director. So this is pretty much a housekeeping uh, resolution. <coughs> um, 
it was pre the changes were presented at the mid-year update and um, some corresponding adjustments were uh, adopted by the City Council at during the city's supplemental budget in March but basically um, the budget is prepared based on estimates and projections and subsequent to that we have the actual numbers um, I was able to reconcile the um, project accounts for some of the projects within the URA the Sequoia Parkway the Library Civic Center and the First Avenue redevelopment and so um, what this uh, resolution does is it adjusts the budget on those lines to the actual um, amount of project funds available for those projects so um, just outlining it quickly uh, it reduces an expected transfer in from the library fund um, since the uh, Civic Center Library project is not expected to go forward in the current year. In the city's um, supplemental budget, we move those funds to a restricted contingency. So eliminating this transfer would be consistent with those changes. Um, it would adjust the Sequoia Parkway extension project to a balance of $3,139,190 as of 6.30. Um, it will adjust this library civic center line to the amount of proceeds that will be available going forward uh, well available as of 6 30 13 which is eight million one hundred and one thousand three hundred and sixty four dollars and it adjusts the first avenue um, line item to a balance of two thousand four hundred and fifty six dollars after considering all of the costs over the uh, several years that that project was in process All right. Any questions for Haley? None. All right. We'll open the public hearing for testimony. Do we have anybody that wishes to speak in favor? And seeing none, anybody that wishes to speak against? Seeing none, we'll close the public testimony. Another opportunity for questions by the hearing body? Seeing none, any discussion by the hearing body? All right, very good. We'll close the public hearing and move on to resolution URR 14-003, adopting a supplemental budget for the 2013-2014 fiscal year. And Haley. Um, does anyone need you to repeat <laughs> 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 Everyone good? Yeah. All right, I need a motion then. Top sure. of page one. I move to uh, accept or approve resolution number URR 14-003, a resolution adopting a supplemental budget for the 2013-2014 fiscal year. And a second? Second. Was that Ken? Yep. Yeah. All righty. It's been moved by Vice Chairman Hodson and seconded by Commissioner Ryder for resolution number URR 14-003, a resolution adopting a supplemental budget for the 2013-2014 fiscal year. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carry 7-0. Thank you. Haley. Next we have new business. And first up is economic development strategy update and proposed initiatives for 2014. Renata? Thank you. So the economic development plan was adopted right about this time a year ago and as part of the plan we committed to come back and report our progress every year so here I am I'm happy to say quite a bit has taken place over the past year and um, the focus of those activities is around uh, um, ex assisting existing businesses um, recruiting new businesses and making sure that can be is a a great place an attractive place to do business so all of the activities are focused on one of those three goals uh, I'd like to go through some of the highlights of the year and you have the details on the appendix a to look at at in detail later if you'd like um, we did have two new industrial businesses move to the Canby Pioneer Industrial Park this year uh, in the past year that'd be Dragonberry Produce and Cascade Engineering Technologies Inc um, both are expanding um, then we've also worked with several local businesses that are expanding their existing facilities they're in various stages of that process um, we've also responded to 15 leads from the state or the region uh, trying to um, recruit businesses here um, one was submitted this Monday for project zoom which I'll talk about in a little bit 
Um, we're also working on promoting our Canby Pioneer Industrial Park, and one of the major initiatives this year was to position it for certified uh, site status with um, Business Oregon. It had attained that status a couple times in the past, but it needs to be renewed every couple, three years. And this time, almost all of the vacant property owners are participating. We submitted a notebook about yay thick to the authorities at Business Oregon to review, and we should be hearing back from them in a few months whether it has been accepted. Um, we are also looking at elevating the information available online on uh, sites and buildings available in the city and the various development opportunities that are there. So we continue, continue to improve our available sites and uh, buildings inventory. I'll be showing you a new iteration next month on that. It's searchable, which is um, nice, a nice feature to have. Uh, we also launched the Canby in the Spotlight newsletter. The inaugural went out in summer. We had another edition in November, and you can expect another one this coming summer. Um, we also continue to evolve and improve the Explore Canby mobile app, which was launched last January. And uh, we launched a film and video program uh, last year in, uh, I think it was officially adopted in the March time frame. And since then we did have a production company do a athletic apparel commercial here in Canby, filmed at Zor Lutheran Church and at the uh, Ackerman Middle School. And then the second was Grimm that was filmed here in late February and aired last Friday featuring Echo Park. Um, I'll try to get the links from both of those pieces on our website so other people can see can be at its best. Um, we also have the Urban Renewal Facade Improvement Program. We continue to have strong business interest in that. We funded five projects um, this past year and there's more coming this year and the Main Street continues to evolve and grow with new initiatives this year around the Historic Review Board as well as a new initiative around arts. So more to come on that under Jamie Stickle's great leadership. So in the coming year, we'd like to shift, uh, continue on building on all of these initiatives, but also to shift focus more toward an aggressive, more aggressive business recruitment and promotion strategy and I'm going to talk you through the executive summary. Um, the full report is about 30 pages, so I thought you'd appreciate a two-page summary that you can refer to. Um, and on the second page, um, we talk about initiatives for 2014. So um, you'll be hearing more about our continuing industry cluster work. We're going to be having an agriculture and um, food processing summit next Tuesday morning at eight o'clock at the police station. Um, we'll have three more in the coming year to continue to understand our core industries, what they need, what their challenges are, and how we can help them, if any. If anything, one of the common themes we're hearing is workforce. Um, we, we as a city don't necessarily have direct control over that, but we do work with partners that can help influence the training that's available to our residents to fill those jobs. Um, then we're going to be doing a more uh, aggressive uh, business retention um, outreach program. I'm going to be partnering with our Business Oregon, um, the, the person that works with Canby on this, uh, Mike Williams. I think many of you have met him. Um, and we plan to reach about 20 businesses over the course of the next two and a half months or so. We'll just meet every Friday. and and meet as many businesses as we, as we can to get a, a better picture and a current s snapshot of where they are and what their issues might be. Um, in terms of longer term strategies, we'd like to be able to do more with entrepreneurs that we are now, but we have a pretty full plate right now, so that may be a little later. Um, in terms of recruiting new businesses and development, uh, the top item here is the Canby Flyer. I've already submitted all of the information to our Greater Portland Inc. partners. They've developed a regional template that each community can customize with information specific to their community. So I'm hoping to be able to show you that uh, work next month. Um, we're also continuing to work on the development review process. It's something that can be challenging and uh, time consuming for businesses. There's a couple of things we're doing now. One is um, st 
streamlining the approval process for industrial development that's gone to the Planning Commission once. They'll be seeing again at the end of this month. They were supportive at the last meeting, assuming everything continues in that vein and we're not hearing anything different. It will be coming before you at the end of May. And that's significant because the planning director could then approve a industrial development if it falls into the general required parameters and that could shave more than a month off the review process. Um, secondly, we're working on open counter now. I talked with that about that with you at our last meeting. Uh, we're well ahead of schedule. Um, we will be starting the debugging process here in the next week or so and then doing internal staff training so that everyone understands how it works and can assist our businesses. So we're hoping to be able to launch it within a few months. We'll keep you posted on that. And then um, we wanted to be more proactive around um, public relations, social media, and business recruitment. You might be wondering a little bit more about the business recruitment side. I'm uh, talking with Greater Portland, Inc. They're really focusing um, intensively on advanced manufacturing and metals manufacturing, which is a core strength for Canby. So it seems like a great opportunity to work with them in their efforts. They're talking about doing um, site selector visits with um, people that focus on manufacturing. They're going to be doing an outreach visit to Chicago. Uh, they're also participating at the, I think it's the National Association of Manufacturers trade show. Um, they have a consultant on board that is tasked with calling up to 300 businesses a year and talking about the merits of the greater region and um, seeing if they'd be interested in learning more. So they're actively promoting the pipeline and they're focusing on metals, which I think is a great opportunity for us. And so um, there's ways to increase the profile and the involvement of Canby, and I'd like to be able to do that um, pending budget approval, which is a relatively modest request in terms of dollars. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, keep working on the industry clusters. We've gotten three done this, week, this year. Uh, next year, we'd like to target healthcare, professional business services, and wholesale trade. Those were the biggest ones that came out of the analysis that we did about a year ago. And then, um, based on the leadership of our mayor, um, we'd like to explore business incentives um, and see where that goes and very much welcome a conversation from all of you about what feels right and what would be a good fit for you. Um, then finally, on ensuring that the that Canby remains an attractive place to do business, um, the next iteration on the certified industrial sites, assuming that all goes well, is to designate those properties where the, the owners are willing as regionally significant industrial lands. And with that comes potential future resources from the state and also higher profile. Um, so it'll be something that I'll be starting conversations with property owners about and those that want to, we can work together on that. It would involve a resolution on your part at some point. Uh, the application process is relatively painless. So um, it's something that I'd recommend we do. Um, we're also continuing to explore the possibility of team track. We had our second, our, our second technical advisory <coughs> committee meeting last week. And we should be seeing the final report uh, within the month or so. Um, there was very interesting additional interviews, including with Union Pacific and with an innovative company up in Canada that does what we do, that w what we're thinking we want to do. Um, they all said, start small, um, go simple, don't invest a lot, test the market, and build as it grows. And so as part of the contract, the consultant will develop a preliminary site plan with phasing. The first will be a very minimalist approach. It might be a rail spur with some gravel that, that trucks can pull up to and load. You can rent the docks and rent the forklifts or whatever you need to, to move the equipment around. And that is a successful model, at least up in Canada, um, through many of the states and provinces there. And build the customer base. And then when we understand better what they need in terms of equipment, 
we can go from there. So um, our next steps are to work with the rail provider and also talk with some third-party logistics providers to see what their interest is in potentially running a facility like this and making the business case to them and seeing where they want to go with it. It's not something that we see the city being an active manager of. We're creating the opportunity for, for them to, to build on. We're not rail operators. So um, that's a quick summary of what I would propose for next year, and I'd like to open it up for any comments or thoughts you have on it. Uh, ask away if you have questions. <coughs> uh, Renata, what are the barriers to a landowner uh, agreeing to the regional designation? Um, the sites that would be most suited are the ones that clearly will remain industrial for the foreseeable future. So uh, because it, in essence, locks in that land use on the property. So if the property owner had aspirations to, at some point, rezone to commercial, and if mm -hmm. that were even possible, then they probably wouldn't want to pursue this. Oh, okay. That be the only there. There's no cost involved to the property owner. It's um, effort on our part, um, minimum, basically agreement by the property owner, uh, minimal um, effort on their part. Okay. So. Just thinking about the lands that are there, probably wouldn't be much of an issue, would it? No, they're very well positioned for yeah. it. Uh, they're larger. They're clearly industrial. Um, they're in a specific area of town that's not likely in anybody's vision to convert to residential or right. commercial or anything like that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Anybody? All right, thank you, Renata. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And now, does that include your economic update or is that next? Uh, that's next. Okay, go ahead. Um, so um, first up is Project Zoom. This was a lead that we received from Business Oregon. They are a high technology manufacturer from the Midwest, and they're looking for about 15,000 square feet. So we have an almost 18,000 square foot building that just became available on the marketplace that would be a great fit for mm -hmm. them. It has all of the amenities that they're looking for. Um, one of the main things that was important to them was to be within an hour of the airport, which we easily are, even in the worst of traffic mm -hmm. conditions. So um, they would, if they choose Camby, and uh, they would be looking at site visits probably in a month or two. So if they chose Camby, they'd be here pretty quick. Um, they'd be looking to bring five jobs and then grow to 15 or 20 jobs over time. So uh, that would be a great addition to Camby if it, if it works out. Um, next up on in terms of business development, I there was an opportunity to nominate companies for the Oregon Counselor Corps Award Ceremony, which is quite an honor. Um, so I nominated Shimazu USA, and they were awarded the Foreign Direct Investment Award, oh, which good. is great. there's only four companies that are honored at this whole event, so it's, it's quite a big oh. deal. So. They'll be going to receive that honor on May 19th. Uh, the next is that, um, unfortunately, there's always good news, bad news. The Trend Business Center, uh, Building A, was formerly occupied by Bella Floor. It was a architectural glass company mm -hmm. that um, was trying to make a go of it for probably four or five years. And in the end, it didn't work out for them. So that means that that building is available on the market. Um, we have a shortage of uh, good industrial buildings, so although we're sad to see Bella Floor um, mm -hmm. close their doors, we're happy about having product that we can market. Uh, next, um, I've been talking with the real estate broker representing Canby Square. Um, it's now under new ownership. It's a San Francisco investment company that is willing to put something into the property. It's very exciting. I don't know if you've noticed, but it received a new coat of paint. It looks much nicer. Yeah. They're planning to redo the parking lot, which is badly needed. They're going to be taking down the restaurant that's been vacant for many, many years, looking at potentially putting up a new pad space that might have one or more spaces for smaller businesses. 
they're in serious uh, negotiations with a couple of tenants. Uh, they couldn't tell me who, but we should know fairly soon. Um, rumor has it's a sporting goods company, but we'll see. Um, so it's it's a great um, investor to have in Canby. Oh, they're also going to do a nice monument sign, which mm. I think is going to be a good improvement. So um, one of the challenges with that shopping center in the past has been in comparison to the Fred Meyer shopping, Canby Square Fred Meyer shopping center, um, they've deferred investment and it's been yeah. obvious and it's been kind of repelling potential tenants. So. Yeah. Um, they were also able to buy out a long-standing lease by Rite Aid, which means that that is now actively on the market. Oh, very good. So um, it could be a, a new day for that shopping center. Very good. Um, I mentioned the Agriculture and Food Processing Summit I, um, earlier. That's next Tuesday. Um, so far we have eight, eight RSVPs, so a little bit smaller crowd. We're going to be doing a call call down of all of the potential businesses on Friday to see if we can get um, more attendance. I didn't realize this, but it is mid-April, and a lot of farmers are busy starting to do what they do. <laughs> so that might explain um, that. I talked about team track findings already and expedited to review and open counter. So if there's any other questions, otherwise I'm done. I'm maybe getting way ahead of myself looking down the road, but <laughs> on this team track, have they done any kind of study about road congestion at the time of the crossings? If they're going to be uh, having more crossings than what they do now, which is very minimal, uh, how that's going to affect the flow of traffic between Sequoia Parkway and uh, what was that red? Pine or Red, Redmond there? Redwood. 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 Um, Dick Samuels, Oregon Pacific Railroad, manages that, and they do most of their um, stacking of their train cars either early morning or at night. So they really mm -hmm. try to avoid uh, traffic congestion. It's kind of fascinating to watch them do the whole process. Mm -hmm. um, and I imagine that they would continue to do that. Right now, they're really only using it, I think, on Fridays that they're doing the big transfer. So there's definitely a lot more room for more traffic, and, and they would welcome it. And they have ways to manage the timing so it doesn't impact traffic as much as okay. it. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Renata. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for nominating Shimadzu. That's great. And next we have Main Street Update with Jamie Stickle. Good evening. Um, first Friday was held uh, Friday, April 4th. Featured seven downtown businesses, including the newly opened, especially for you, which is a woman's boutique uh, located at 181 North Grant Street in the old Graham building. Um, we've been marketing this through our uh, Facebook page and it's been really helpful because we can see the amount of people that are clicking on the ads which it allows to target a little bit better if just saying first Friday isn't getting a click maybe saying you know retail specials and food specials or live music things of that nature um, so it's been a, a good process to be able to um, advertise our on our Facebook page the downtown draw this month for um, April, that says March, but for April, is the Canby Massage Therapy and Day Spa, located at 285 Northeast 3rd Avenue. Um, they provide massage therapy and relaxation in Canby. They've been here, they've been in Canby since, uh, for 17 years, but have been at that location for 10. Um, this effort, the Downtown Draw, helps to market downtown businesses and focuses on entertainment and service-oriented businesses. It's featured on the, um, in the newsletter, on the Facebook page and then also given to the business so that if they'd like they can um, use it for their own marketing efforts in the future. The Historic Review Board met on March 3rd to discuss um, their communication plan. We also met at uh, the beginning of this month and um, we're moving forward with the intensive request for proposal for the intensive level survey which will see a um, contractor come out and do a survey on two to five businesses that was what we were awarded for the certified local government grant um, and so we're 
moving forward with that, we've gotten the seal of approval with the State Historic Preservation Office, um, and it went up on our website, I believe, yesterday. Um, two new businesses will be opening their doors in downtown Canby in April. Retro Revival and the Big White Goose Barn House will be moving downtown Canby from Oregon City. Uh, Retro Revival will be located at 308 North Grant Street. It sells vintage furniture, clothing, arts, and home goods. Big White Goose Barn um, stocks Annie Sloan paints and holds painting workshops to teach painting techniques. Um, it will also house home decor and provide design consultations. That is going in where the old quilt shop was. Um, we're working with these businesses to ensure a smooth transition. And it's just really encouraging, you know, if you asked six months ago what we needed downtown, I think a lot of people would say retail. In the last six months, we've gotten, now we'll have these two businesses, plus the especially for you and the Crooked Cottage over here right across from the library. So our um, amount of retail has really upped in the last couple of months, which is really exciting. The Canby Arts and Culture Advisory Council met on Monday, March 31st to discuss plans for an art installation in Canby. Um, the group has been really great because as they brainstorm, if things come up like we aren't able to use certain locations, um, they are quick to see what else is out there. So it's been really encouraging that they're not just stuck to one idea, but they want to make something beautiful and something great in downtown Canby. Um, that's where their first location is, is just in downtown Canby that we're focusing on. Um, and that they're willing to be flexible on where exactly that, that goes. At the last meeting, um, they discussed installing art pieces on the plinths that were made for art along First Avenue. Um, and they would like to represent Canby's unique history. Uh, so as this comes together more, I'll be real to report back. Um, at the design committee meeting, um, the committee was asked to provide an idea for a theme for the new sides of the benches planned for Second Avenue. On First Avenue, there are green benches with large trees in the, the bottom sides of them. They represented the trees that were diseased and taken down during the First Avenue um, redevelopment project. The Jerry Nelzine from uh, Public Works had asked if we would ask what the design committee had in mind. And one of the ideas, or the main idea, I should say, came up to put an ox cart in the side um, that would help to stay true to the history of Second Avenue being so big um, or so wide so that the ox carts could turn around. So I relate that information to Jerry Nalzine and um, the new benches should be installed by July. Any questions? I do have one. Would and I asked uh, during the design committee meeting and I was just wondering if you found <coughs> anything out about the trees that were taken down on First Avenue. Those we're supposed to have the stumps turned into right. some sort of art to be returned to First Avenue. Did we Ren find anything out? Renata's reached out to Toby, who is the gentleman, and we're going to just make an appearance at his place because she hasn't had heard anything back, um, and just try and, and see if we can, if there's something in the works still, or what is going on with that wood. So, um, okay. yeah, that's what the plan is. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No, thank you, Jamie. All right, thank you, Jamie. All right, another opportunity for citizen input tonight. Anyone? All righty. We have to do a little bit of a procedural do -si do tonight. The Urban Renewal Agency is going to briefly recess and we'll pass the gavel to the mayor so that we can have a special city council meeting. And then afterwards, the Urban Renewal Agency will reconvene very briefly and then we'll go into an executive session. <laughs> so getting ready for a little bit of logistics tonight. So for now, I'm recessing the agency meeting and passing the gavel to the mayor. And we will convene our city council meeting. Uh, we will discuss with the Pledge of Allegiance and nothing since that's been done. Uh, with that, uh, first opportunity anything from the those in attendance for citizen input or community announcements on a city level? None? Great. We'll move into new business and turn it over to Amanda. Great. Thank you. Uh, so last uh, last time we met, you had asked to for me to come back with recommendations for firms for city recruitment. Uh, I had brought, I think, four, four or five options last week, and you asked me to narrow it to three. Uh, I came up with the three that are on the list that I just passed around to you. The one that dropped off was the one that was the least established. Uh, so all of these organizations have been doing this for quite some time. 
the first one is the League of Oregon Cities, uh, and then Prothman and Waldron. And I tried to put together uh, just a quick little table of what the, the main pieces of each recruitment would be and what each firm offers. So that's what you have in front of you. Service level cost, timelines, uh, if there's a guarantee included or not. <coughs> A lot of these have uh, a, a base cost and then it says additional expenses um, are the responsibility of the city. Those expenses are really hard to determine. A League of Oregon Cities is significantly less than Prothman or Waldron because their services are set up and intended to assist a, a city process. Mm -hmm. So that's why their services are much less because it involves much more involvement of city staff. Prothman and Waldron are more full service. Um, Prothman lists a base price, which includes three on-site visits. They actually are located in Washington. And <coughs> their additional costs include any additional visits that would need to be made, printed materials and binders. Um, all of them would include, as additional cost, any candidate travel. <coughs> so if we had candidates coming in from out of state or from out of the area and we were paying for hotels or, or if we elected to pay for travel, all that would be in addition. Uh, one other thing I'd like to point out is each of the three does some form of background. Some of it's included, some of it's extra. Um, the city has a very good process for doing criminal checks and we could do that for fairly, fairly quickly and very low cost um, to supplement any one of these processes. Uh, we would leave the reference checking to the firms, but for criminal backgrounds, driving records, all that, we have systems in place and accounts set up, we could do that fairly easily. And we have uh, a number of background investigators. If we wanted to do a more extensive background on our own, we could do that. They could do a um, credit verification and degree verification. They can, and we can also very quickly okay. and easily. So you don't see those as any kind of barriers? No. Nope. Okay. Is there a, Mike, I think you brought up the concern of um, the additional expenses that can occur. Where is um, Waldron, where are they based out of? They have an office in Portland. They, they have several offices, but they also have one in Portland. Okay. Have you ever worked with them in the past? No, no. I have not. Worked Any with League of Oregon Cities, although the person that's in there that does that now is not the same person that was there the last time that I worked with them and uh, worked with Prothman. And Prothman's where we found Chief Smith, is that right? Right. League of Oregon Cities we used for Greg Ellis um, and Prothman for Brett Smith. How have those two been to work with? The League of Oregon Cities and Prothman, if you had to give your sense of how they've been to work with? Um, both of them are good to work with. It's just a matter of what, how much you want to assist their process. Um, but both of them have been great. Campy Fire is using Prothman too, correct? Yep. Oh. I like the uh, Prothman two-year guarantee. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at that too. Sorry. Not that I anticipate churning in two years, but it's a nice caveat to have. Yeah. Well, about one in six do. I know. Is it one in six? Yeah. So um, it's it's something to keep in mind. Amanda, um, what do you think? I, I wasn't around last time we did this, so I don't know. I, but I do know with school board recruitments. They do have a couple members of the school board that do on-site visits in the city of, of the finalists. Is that something we've done? Is that something you'd recommend or leave that to the professionals? I would leave that to the professionals, but I can tell you when we worked with Prothman previously, they, they do a lot of national recruitment. Um, both Prothman and Waldron will reach out nationally and have a lot of contacts. Uh, I know they did uh, Skype interviews, a lot of online and uh, phone interviews, and they would they have uh, processes set up to be able to 
view and see people without being in contact. But I think at a certain point, if if we wanted them to go do something on site, we could either have the candidate come here or they would go there. <coughs> well, I uh, to get this rolling, Mr. Mayor, I my preference and my recommendation to the council would be that that we consider uh, that we exclude the, the league. I'm I'm more inclined to to spend a little bit more and have a little bit more done by professionals to kind of leave the lights on here at home mm -hmm. and not have uh, resources being pulled on. Um, I'd like to see a, a full citizen committee uh, that uh, uh, helps provide a, a feel and taste for what the community wants. Uh, but I, uh, the league, while it does a terrific job, it's, it's, a, it's more of a partnership than I think I'm ready to commit the city to at this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Black Wings, thank you for that. Any other thoughts on that uh, piece? Question for me. Yes, please. Uh, we've been talking a bit about having a citizen community committee as a search committee that could perhaps be the primary interface during the recruitment and then send the two or three best candidates uh, to the council. Do you feel like Profman and Waldron would work well with that kind of a committee, assuming we'd done a, a good job on our profiling? that they could interface with that kind of committee well? I think either one of those firms would do a good job. I okay. know Prothman did a very similar process for the police chief. Okay. Uh, we had a committee that had staff, had citizens and members of the council on it, and they worked very successfully with that. It was just an advisory committee. Right. Uh, but a lot of interaction between that committee and the firm. Okay. Very good. Uh, two, two questions that I have. Um, reputation of Waldron. You know, I, I mean, do you have any any input on that? I, it's just a new name. I, we've worked so much with Prothman and nothing against them. I'm just curious as to. I have not heard no. anything okay. negative about Waldron. I've only heard good things. Okay. Um, the other question to kind of play off uh, Councillor Parker and Councillor Dale is the community piece was a very integral part, I think, with uh, the hiring of uh, Greg Ellis. Uh, we did have a lot. We included a a pretty good sized community group as part of that interview process and and uh, it included a lot of you know business professionals and and people within the community that and we gave them the opportunity to weigh in on uh, I think part of the interview process was a debrief after each interview section um, the, the candidates kind of ran a gauntlet of I think five different groups or something or four and then each group kind of weighed in at the end of that interview and Kind of reported back to us i think at the end of the evening before the uh meet and greet over at place to be that occurred and kind of got a flavor of likes dislikes and and we were able to kind of pinpoint that that you know down that list of what we wanted to see so i think that's a key piece uh i think for our community uh, and i think both you gentlemen hit it on that and i think that's kind of i'm seeing the head nodding on that piece um so i think that has to be a a big big piece to that if you had an opportunity to look through those proposals that mm -hmm. they sent and, and keep in mind that I asked them to send very quick proposals mm -hmm. and yeah. gave them a three-day turnaround not not anything major and official so they may have more to offer at some point but um, all three of the firms and if we're just talking about Prothman and Waldron at this point they had a lot of language in there about that process and meeting with the council to find out what your needs were and how you envision the process going and then how they can uh, structure it to meet what your needs are. Uh, but uh, both of their proposals include a very extensive and interactive public process. When uh, Councillor Parker asked the question of um, counselors going and researching um, candidates, you, you smirked <laughs> as you are now. Um, why is that, Amanda? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody from Hawaii. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I, I think we did have when with at some point there was some once we got the list of candidates and where they were from, there were a number of there were a few counselors that did a few road trips to various cities in the area to take a look and I don't know how much poking was done, but I do suspect that. Um, this council would probably be doing much of the same on um, uh, within a, a, a reasonable driving distance or not. I mean, <laughs> I mean the mayor gave 
Well, I, I, don't know. I, I think, I think I it think was purely up to the counselors to, oh, on their own, expense. on their own expense, yeah, at okay, their own okay. own desire to do that. Um, but I, I do know that that's. I, I've done this once with a, a recruitment for an executive director of a nonprofit, where I flew down to Austin and and walked the streets and talked to people and. Um, that was 20 years ago, and perhaps the liability of, of a civilian walking in into different people and doing lateral interviews who friends of friends and say, what do you think of this person, now is totally off limits. Uh, so perhaps uh, we need to let the pros do that. But it, it, there, it, it, it did provide us with a sense that uh, we had gotten to know people who uh, lived in that community with the person but and I do know that that's how school boards operate that they actually let their school board members out on the loose uh, in these communities of finalists but I, I, I appreciate your uh, wisdom in recommending that this council not do that well I would say two two things number one it's a desirable position and I don't see any reason why you won't get a lot of good candidates and as such I think they would be happy to come here on their own if necessary to do part of that process the other piece of that is a lot of that can come in the background separate from what the firm is doing whatever agency you choose so there's multiple opportunities I'll defer to your judgment do um, do we have any thoughts or input in terms of how how far of a net we cast do we want to leave that to the search com the company that we decide from or don't try this at home leave it to the pros can I ask a question, couple of questions? Yes. Um, on the police chief search through Profman, um, do you have any recollection of how many applicants there were and how long that process took? 65 to 69 applicants. Um, and I think it was very similar to their 10 to 14 week um, timeline that they provided in their estimate here. And then how about on our uh, previous city manager, about how many applicants and how long that took? I don't remember how many applicants we had. And I think they're, they're, all the processes have about the same timeline. Okay. Um, with the, the police chief probably had more because I think we had a little bit more public involvement okay. at that time. Thank and you very much. I remember when it came down, after the league had kind of sorted through, they presented us with a um, really a binder. I think it was about 40 applicants that we then went through and filtered out through conversation and reading through and then uh, kind of went from there so it was, it was pretty substantial um, to go back to the net casting well I was just calling a conversation from last week and if we're going to be on the hook so to speak for travel expenses would it be prudent to maybe try to keep that net at least to the Northwest for now so the travel expenses for candidates would be less expensive than, say, someone from the East Coast? My gut with that is, uh, uh, Councillor Parker's comment, I think that would leave that to either whichever group we decide to go with. Um, I think the travel expense piece occurs when we get down to those final candidates that we want to bring in um, and, and actually do a face-to-face -face and put them through that kind of a a gauntlet piece so if we have somebody that's applying from the true I mean it, well, it was all day long and um, so if we've got somebody from Connecticut and they're one of our finalists I, I don't think we want we want to go after you know the, the best for our city and I don't think I don't know if I, I'm, I think we should limit that but that's I think those parameters will get decided on when we decide on either one of these groups or okay. so. our, our consultant may have a suggestion the last national recruitment I did was four years ago and for the first round of interviews it uh, was on the dime of, of the applicants once you made it past the first round but we had a person show up from Florida who flew out here on their own to be uh, interviewed and they didn't make it to the to the second round so I think it's something that we can decide as we get there and based upon the consultants that if, if we have somebody who um, we really want to take a look at then we can discuss it at that time flexibility is going to be key to this 
Uh, it's going to be an interesting thing. A good time to have professionals, I think, as the fire service is finding that all of their um, best candidates um, uh, have retired. That uh, there was this big graying of, of management in both the fire service and in city management. That a lot of people came into the biz at the same time, and a lot of them are going out at the same time. And so um, it's it's a little trickier. I mean, a lot of the city managers uh, around Oregon, at least, were Mr. Ellis's uh, age. And um, I know a few years ago when I was with Gresham and we were hiring a fire chief, that there was all of the fire chiefs across the country retired at once. <laughs> and and the next level down was like 20 years less experience, that, that there had been this big hiring mm -hmm. uh, and then cutbacks in, in in city budgets. And so you would you froze that normal linear passage uh, of, of upward mobility and management. So <clears throat> it could be that we need, need some cleverness in, in this because it, it may not, um, we may end up with a different pool than we've seen in the past. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, so I've heard from uh, Greg and, or pardon me, Councilor Parker and Councilor Dale just on thoughts on um, maybe not League of Oregon Cities. Is there any other opinions out there in terms of um, Use them, not use them, or is sure, there no. a feeling? No, okay. no I prefer okay. to go with one or the other two. Yeah. Um, I like prof. Okay. Me too. I concur. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I think we're all nodding on that. Okay. So I'm seeing uh, a lot of agreement on perhaps pursuing Prothman as our, our search firm at this point. Okay. Great. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move to have the interim city administrator enter into a contract with Prothman for city administrator recruitment services. Okay, so I'll second that. Okay, I'll let Mr. Parker say that. <laughs> we'll fight with the same thing. <laughs> he won't be to blame if this fails. <laughs> uh, motion has been made by uh, Council President Dale and seconded by Council Parker to have the, the interim city administrator enter in a, into a contract with Prothman. For uh, sorry, yes, Prothman for city administrator recruitment services. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 6 0. Great. Perfect. Um, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. I second that. All right, it's been moved by Council Roche to say by Council Pisley to adjourn the city council meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we are adjourned, and I'll turn it back to you, sir. All right. The Urban Renewal Agency will now reconvene just long enough to say that the Urban Renewal Agency will now <laughs> recess this meeting to meet in executive session for the purpose of discussing real property. The executive session is held pursuant to ORS 192.660, parent 2, parent E, which allows the agency to meet in executive session to discuss those topics. Only representatives of the news media and designated staff shall be allowed to attend the executive session. The agency will adjourn to the City Hall Conference Room to hold its executive session. Representatives of the news media are specifically directed not to report on any of the deliberations during the executive session, except to state the general subject of the session as previously announced. No decision may be made in executive session. At the end of the session, we may reconvene the meeting in the City Hall Conference Room and conduct any further business that needs to be taken care of. And we will now recess to the City Hall Conference Room. Thank you, Candy. Good night. Good night.